Greetings, class, and welcome to part three in our screencast series on lab report grading rubrics. Uh, here you can see the same rubric as before. Um, we are focusing this time on data and results. If you have not already watched them, I strongly encourage you to watch the uh, other videos on introductions and procedures. So the uh, data and results section is worth 14 points. It is very distinct from our conclusion section, which is another 15 points, and um, is really where you are going to dump all of your graphs, your uh, charts, and any illustrations of what happened, uh, as well as including a text portion that will reference those things and provide any descriptions of trends and data. So let's talk about these a little bit in turn. So. Uh, Graphs are pretty self-explanatory, but uh, we want to make sure that we include any kind of tables. So here's a, here's a, a table, uh, and really, actually, this should be noted to be called like table one, which I'm not sure why it's not there. Uh, here we have figure one, which is a graph. You'll note that it has two different um, sets of things on it. It has the, the data itself, and it has a line of best fit. Uh, to give us some indication about trends, which we'll talk about in a minute. Always, always, always give your graph a title. It doesn't have to be anything particularly flashy, but it should basically tie the variables together, and it should have units, and it should have both axes um, labeled on it. And so um, this would be a pretty standard kind of graph. So in this graph, we can see that our enzyme concentration as it went up, the time it took for the little piece of paper to float to the surface went down. So there is an inverse relationship here. That would be basically describing a trend in the data. So if we scroll up here, we can see in our results section, we have a text portion. And here is that basic inverse relationship. Time required for the disk to float to the top decreases as the enzyme concentration increases. That would be a description of a trend in the data. Um, you could also uh, note your, or should also note, your qualitative observations. So remember, quantitative versus qualitative. Qualitative are things that you really can't put a number on, whereas quantitative are. So the time measurements for how long it took this piece of paper to float, that would be a quantitative measurement. Those things are pretty often included. Qualitative observations oftentimes get forgotten. Things you just simply happened to note as you were doing the lab, like maybe over time the, the solution you were using seemed to change in color or um, the item in the test tube became more thick. Those aren't things that necessarily get numerical values and don't show up in graphs, but they're things that still are important and should be put into your results section. So in our text section, you'll note, for example, um, in each trial, the disk was noted to fizz when placed in the solution. The disk sank and bubbles were observed to collect on its surface. Those are qualitative observations, and they are worth noting. Um, we have our, we've already talked about our trend. Um, you want to make sure you reference your figures. So if you are going down to, to make comment about this table of information, note it. If you want to use your graph to make reference to that, note it as well like we did here, we put it in parentheses. One of the things that students often mix up on writing a results section is they don't distinguish results from conclusions. So we need to make sure that we really do a good job of that. A results section is just the factual information or at least the summary of that. So a trend in the data is a summary of it. But you notice that nowhere in this results section do I explain why the uh, disk floated surface. I simply noted that there was an association between the disk floating and the enzyme concentration. I didn't say the disk floated at the top because the enzyme broke down the hydrogen peroxide. Um, that would be um, drawing beyond the data set to actually make an inference or draw a conclusion from it. That belongs in your conclusion section, where it's appropriate to say it there. But here, you really need to stick just to the factual information. It would be a surefire way for you to lose some points if you start talking about the why something happened. Uh, if you see because in your method in your results section, probably means that that 
part of it should be taken out. Okay, so your, just to summarize, your results section should give graphs, figures, tables, any sort of visual depictions of things that happen. It should have a text component that summarizes what happened in the experiment. Um, if you had any sort of odd things occur, it certainly should get that as well. And you really should just give a summary of all the qualitative observations in the lab. If you follow those directions and you don't include any inferences or conclusions, you're on the right track to writing a good results section. Hope this helps, and stay tuned for our section on conclusions.